Thanks to our sponsors, Hit Point Press. Check out their Big Bad Bundles. Link in the description below. All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here. Today, we are talking about the Way of the Streets Monk subclass. This is from Crystal Punk. If you're new to the channel or the series, what we're going to do is go through all the abilities gained in the subclass. Then we're going to rate the roleplay, combat, and synergy based on the abilities gained, how they improve on the base class abilities. Pretty much. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to be entered in our D&D Beyond bundle giveaway. First off! All that being said, let's get right into it. Would you like more monk in your monk? Would you like more street fighter in your monk? Also, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, we start off with street smarts. You gain proficiency in the intimidation. Then they have their own personal streetwise skill, which is yes. unique to their setting. Or the performance skill, your choice. So you get three different skill proficiencies, one of which is strictly to their campaign, which is cool. I, I like that there's an option in there. So if you do, yep. you're actually playing their full campaign... You can kind of get an extra proficiency there. If not, the other two still two standard options, so sure. we're fine to work with. Then we have combos. Starting at third level, and man, like you said, free fighter up here. <laughs> uh, you unleash powerful combos against your opponents. Once per turn, when you hit a creature with an unarmed strike, you can spend one key point to launch into a combo against that creature. When you begin your combo, you deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage to that target. If you roll a three or lower, on this damage die, you repeat this bludgeoning damage with a d6 instead. If you roll a 3 or lower again, the effects repeats, increasing to a d8, then a d10, and then a d12. You gain no benefit if you roll a 3 or lower on the final d12. Your combo receives no additional benefit if a triggering attack had that resulted in a critical hit. So you can't stack. Right, you know, it doesn't critical. get double. Yeah. <laughs> when your t a combo ends, you can force the target to make a strength saving throw. On a failure... It is pushed back five feet away from you for each damage die you rolled as part of the combo. If the target is against a wall or solid structure, when they fail the saving throw, they take bludgeon damage equal to one roll of your martial arts die instead of moving. And starting at level 11, the damage threshold for continuing the combo increases to four. Right. So, so to punch all that down to a very simple <laughs> mechanic here, essentially what it's doing is addressing like bad luck. So right. if you roll low on your damage die, you get a bigger damage die until you roll at you least rolling, yeah. you know a, you a, a decent number. A, a, gr a gradually decreasing chance of getting to keep re-rolling, but you can keep going if you keep rolling low. Right, but at the same time, if you roll you know, four ones and a two, you've only done six total damage anyway. Right. So I mean, I, I mean ideally, you'd want to roll low. But like, if you did roll really low on all of them, that you means get you, the, you get to the end, which you means like you can you knock them back further, or they can hit a wall or correct. something. So there's, the, there's a cool little... like. Either you're kind of cool if you do, cool if you don't kind yeah, of thing. Which is great. If you want some quick damage, I mean, especially once you hit 11 and it's a 4, yeah, automatically that second you're thing's going to hurt. twice. Yeah, and it's, you can get 10 just on the one single right. strike. So, yes. Very interesting. All of that. That's one ability. Yeah. Level 6, we get Signature Art. You choose a specialized fighting technique, which is from one of three options. The first is Dragon Punch. You finish your combos with a powerful uppercut. I think it's a Ryokin. Pretty much. Uh, when a creature fails, the strength saving throw made at the end of one of your combos, they are also knocked prone. So I, I'd make that comment because we were talking about Street Fighter right before we started this video. Uh, anyways, yeah. second option. I can't get my hands further back than that. Speaking of, what? Surging Fist. You can unleash a surge of energy from your fists. You can spend two key points to cast oh, Guiding Bolt <laughs> as a bonus action using Wisdom as your spellcasting ability. And your last option is Wave Dash. You move with incredible speed. Whenever you use Step of the Wind, you gain the benefits of both Dash and Disengage instead of only one. Super mobile monk. Yeah. And you have advantage on the next attack roll you make on that turn. Yeah. So, so it's like, by you, coming to you, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Next up is Key Fueled Combos. Once you reach level 6, the damage dealt by your combos counts as magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks and damage. And also, you can spend three key points instead of one when you enter a combo. If you do, you roll two dice at each stage of your combo, dealing the total mm. as the damage for that stage. If either dice is below the damage threshold, the combo continues. So you get way higher probability. So yeah, the, so once you hit six, you're going to start doing lots of punchy kicky. Mm -hmm. And throw some headbutts in there and some knees and things like that, I, I encourage. It, uh, it's basic to me. It's basically fl replacing what flurry of blows does, and just makes it better. Yeah, 
it gives you another option for yeah. something like that. Uh, level 11, we have Combo Breaker. When you're hit with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to deflect it by spending one key point, and you do reduce the damage by 1d10, plus your dex mod, plus your monk level. Yeah. So you say no. Nope. If you reduce the damage to zero, you can make a single unarmed strike against the creature that attacked you as part of the same reaction, provided they are within range. So a very strong defensive tool. Yes. And finally, at level 17, we have Ultra Technique. After you roll a d12 as part of one of your combos, you can spend one key point to unleash a powerful finishing move against the target. If you do, the target fails a strength saving throw made at the end of the combo. The target is paralyzed for one minute. A paralyzed target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns and ending the effect on itself on a success. And once you use the feature, you can't use it again within the next minute. Very interesting that we see that minute specification yeah. and not and like a short rest or of, something. Over all the abilities, and just as a quick thing to bring up before we go into our rating portion, is that all of these, with the exception of the last, have no limitation on time usage, right. just Other the cost key of key points. But mm-hmm. you get those back on short rest. Yes. So, and they're all pretty cheap, which they, we will get into. This is <laughs> this is angry, kicky, punchy, fist of fury, monk. Absolutely. So, speaking of angry, punchy, kicky, fury, f- fists, monk. I think I maybe almost got that. Anyways, to uh, the RP section. Yes, yeah, we're getting there. Uh, <laughs> asterisk, as always, talking about role play. We're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside the initiative order. Not talking about your class, fantasy, history, lore, background. That's on you as a player. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in the subclass. How do we improve your potential in those role play scenarios? Sorry, I was going for a, a speed run on that one. I was just just curious. You, 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 Combo chain in the words. Yeah, in there. That, that was the thought process. Uh, Anyways, normally I do fun county things when you're going through all the stuff. There wasn't much to count on the RP here, so I was like, eh, no, just put it back. <laughs> yes, because you pretty much just get a free skill point proficiency. So, not much. Per, per, per so, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe some super niche stuff with like if you took wave dash, but. I, I, that's that's the only other thing that you could even but make a case to, for. You'd it. have to pick it, and it would be niche on top of that. So mm-hmm. we went with a one and a half. Yeah, not really a whole lot going on in the role play yeah. side. Yeah. So so punchy kicky monk does punchy kicky monk. Mm-hmm. So that's what this thing does. It's way of the streets. It's not way of the classroom. <laughs> The way of the book. <laughs> the, no, no. Sounds like an interesting subclass. It does. I have to look into that one. <laughs> right. mm. And idea. idea. <laughs> Put that in the Don't back pocket. That. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, the combo mechanic. I absolutely love the combo mechanic. Without question. Because, again, for those of you like me, whose luck is completely feast or famine when it comes to rolling dice, you either, not lying. You either roll like... That something's got an AC of 18. It's like, ah, 31 to hit. You're like, yeah, I rolled a natural 19. It's like, kill, cool. unnecessary, but all right. And you're like, oh, saving throw. I just got a concentration check. Just got to get a 10. Got a plus 7. Rolls 2. <laughs> ah! yeah, yeah, so yeah. that... Welcome that's, to the Indies. That's, that's the way it is. So, like, things that address the bad luck protection. Mm-hmm. Hey! Um, and I like the fact that it scales up into just bigger and bigger dice until you hit the damage threshold. So you're eventually going to, most of the time, you won't see the D12 right. pre-level 6, which we'll get to in a second. Yeah. And I like how 11, the damage threshold starts at 4 for continuing. So you know you're at least going to get to roll to the D6 mm-hmm. every single time. Which is good because by then your regular March Arch die has already scaled up a couple of times. Right. So it would be really bad if this didn't have some scaling yeah. part of it as well. Especially with the hit level 6. Yeah. The uh, signature art thing, like Jameson mentioned, Wave Dash definitely has a use. If you really want to be mobile, it's definitely in there. But the other two, I think Sync would be more leaning into what the monk's trying to do most of the time. Of just mm-hmm. getting as many hits in there and effectively as possible. Um, I like what the Dragon Punch lets you do because it's anytime you can knock something prone when you're in melee is great because you just have advantage on beating the crap out of everything. Yep. And I will say too, if you knock something prone and you do a combo on them, yes, they're up against a solid surface. So at the end, when you punch down, you're getting that extra martial just, arts. Cur- just, I mean, just curb stomp them at that point. Yeah. I mean, put, <laughs> for, foot foot to face. Much. Foot to face. Foot to face. Uh, yeah, dude, people's elbow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
The, again, the only problem I have here with that is the strength saving throw. As you can yeah. tell later, things the same problem with the capstone and everything else is the strength saving throw is not going to be as reliable there. So yeah, unless you're focusing on like the small creatures, assuming and stuff they like that. exist, yeah. I, it's, again, that's what a lot of martial classes I think are good at targeting like anti casters like you. Right. If I can get to you, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're done. Uh, which again, if anything can get to something that's a melee. It's this, yeah, uh, monks right. in general, but especially this. Uh, but personal favorite, love Surging Fist because it does give you a reliable range for two key points. It's not that big a cost mm-hmm. to give you a guiding bolt, and you, it is your wisdom for your spell casting ability. So it's you're going to be your third stat yeah. probably, but usually you're going to try to get it to a, you know 14 relatively quickly, and then a six probably by 16, you know, at some point. So well, it's possible. Just trying to and hit I, for some damage, and it gives you you or somebody else advantage on an attack. Right. And I would think too, if you're if you're going with the combo breaker, once you hit eleven, you're going to be you could basically spend one key point in reaction reduce damage by twenty on average. Like yeah, that's a lot for one key point. So yeah, you might not be that hard pressed to to actually push con to third. You could yeah. maybe get away with it. You, you, this is true. Or, it, it, or at least even split early them. Early on, yeah. maybe not. Yeah. Yeah, maybe not early on, but if you're start playing, starting a campaign off at a little bit higher level, yeah. when you know 11's not that far away, then yeah, maybe you could get you away could, with it. For sure. Uh, again, once you get six, your you know combos count for magical damage. Great, because it makes them more reliable. Uh, and of course, you can spend three key points instead of... One to start off with, so you roll two dice. So you've got the option mm-hmm. of making that combo really go if you want to spend the points to making sure it's you're getting the most out of that yeah. effect. Yeah, you and really again, need the knockback or something yeah, really desperate. I like the fact that it's a choice. Yeah. So if you want, you're not worried about yeah, you know, getting. I'm not sure if it's going to hit or whatever else. So just do the regular version. You know? it, yeah, and it's a it's just a little bit more expensive, but it's way more reliable because instead of you, yeah. if you're doing you know two different combos, it would obviously cost two key points. Yeah. But you're doing two combos like at once, but you're getting that reliability of it having a higher chance to go on. Yeah. So you're getting you're paying one extra for that more reliability, which yeah. I think is 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 nice. Absolutely. Of, as Jameson already mentioned, Combo Breaker is wonderful because it only costs you one key point for your reaction to get a very good amount of damage reduction. And, and if it does happen to reduce the damage to zero, which, I mean, heck, if it's 1d10, you roll average of 6, Dexterity Mod cap 5 is 11, plus your Monk level 11. at 11, that's 22 damage. Yeah. Uh, it is, does use reaction, though, so... If they have multi attack, you got to keep that in mind. Right, but but still reducing that, and then you get a, if it happens to reduce it to zero, just here's a free kick to the knee. Right, great. And then finally, of course, it's your capstone, the extra super powerful punch. I'll get I'll get you in the synergy. Sorry, I just yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting too excited. Come down. The ex, the extra super power punch blow, paralyze, and it's once per minute. You can try to use this feature again. Nice, wonderful. Because again, it's only one key point. A lot of the stuff does cost key points, but the most expensive individual ability is three. Mm-hmm. Get them all back on a short rest. You can spin these pretty consistently yeah. throughout combats, unless you're one of the you know you've got just a ton of combats. But you play with it, see how it's going to go. The only thing that holds this thing back just a little bit is the fact that you're attacking strength saving throws with two of these abilities. To me, sure is that again later on if you don't if you're not fighting enemy casters range attackers. You may have run into some issues of that of those two features hitting consistently. Mm-hmm. Besides that, this thing does exactly what monks want it to do. It even gives you an option for a ranged attack or being more mobile if you want to. We gave it a four and a half out of a possible five on yeah. the combat side of things. Very solid. Big yes. fans of it. And speaking of all of that, kind of tying in, I already made some of my comments already. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't restrain myself. Did you know? On the synergy side, well, I think one of the big things too is just right off the bat before I forget about it, is the combo breaker. Mm-hmm. If you do reduce the damage to zero, which, I mean, if you're at level 20, you are going to reduce it on average by over 30. Yeah. So that's, so, that's a lot of that's damage to reduce. That's so much. And if you Tank do, monk. Here's the fun, yeah, and here's the fun thing, too, is you can also bonus action dodge as well. So you could bonus action dodge with the key point, and then mm-hmm. if you actually get hit, re- just mm-hmm. say no, basically, mm-hmm. to a lot of damage, if not all of it. Yep. But if you do make that single unarmed strike against a creature by reducing it to zero, guess what? When you hit with an unarmed strike, you can spend a key point and start a combo. Yes. So you, you, can, you can totally reaction combo. Exactly. And, or three and, points. And once you hit 17, you can reaction combo stun. Right, yeah. Okay. Reaction combo. Re- double. You could, you could double reaction. 
Yes. You could do the three points. Yes. So use one point, basically say no to the damage. Yes. Three more points to go into a double combo. Yes. And then ultra technique one to go into the paralyzed. Yeah. You're going to bring like, a bunch of key points, so you for, can just say... all of the big don't, angry creatures don't have, don't you know, touch. lair actions and legendary actions. Like, this is the closest I've seen a player character be able to have, like, a legendary action <laughs> <laughs> on somebody else's turn. Yeah. It does cost you quite a bit of resources to do, to go all out like right. that. Yes. But you technically could interrupt something else's turn. And I will say, too, just it's, because you reduced it's the not to com- It's not 100% reliable to do that, because no. for, for the capstone, you have to hit a 12... You're just gonna once you can roll a four or lower, and you're rolling two of them. It's gonna be relatively easy to I mean, get to you, twelve. You're, you're gonna get to that that eight basically every time, yeah. And you're gonna hit tens quite often, right? And I, there's a hundred percent chance I'm gonna sit down and test this, like <laughs> after we after we've shot this and gone. There's like okay, if I do ten rounds of this, how many times do I get to the twelve? Right. And if I do twenty, how many times do I get to the twelve? There's going to be a table, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, all that being said, and one of the other things, too, is just by talking about this, you see immediately, literally all of these abilities tied together. Because even the Dragon Punch, yes. when you finish a combo, you do a powerful uppercut. It yep. ties into the combos if, if you were to take that one. Yes. So you literally, on a reaction, could use all of your subclass abilities on one reaction. Yeah. Which is... Just shows you how which is, well this is made. Which is really nifty. Yeah, it's it's wild. I mean, other than obviously your proficiency, but all of the combat things, you yep. could combo all of your abilities together and use them on somebody else's turn. <laughs> exactly. So, I think it's really easy just to go straight from that and just say we gave it a five and the synergy. It's yeah. so well designed and so inter. Linked all the because abilities, my, just, and it ties in with your key point. You see, just, well. some classes don't have much to synergize with. Right, monk doesn't have a ton to synergize with. There are a number of things yeah. you have your key martial points. arts, martial arts mechanics, mm-hmm. and your key points. Which this and does every both. single ability here either costs key points or plays off or lets you do something that triggers Play an unarmed strike or something. Except right. for the. You know, skill proficiency for right. some level of RP. Exactly. The rest of them have something to do with what you do as a monk already. Right. And if that's the case, it's kind of hard to not give it a five. The only yeah. way it wouldn't, based on the amount of times it gives you, is if like all the abilities costed more key points. Right. If do. it was less efficient or less. Yeah. Effective. If it was like this one cost three, this is five, this is four. It's like no one, 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 two, three. That's it. So yeah. Love it. Way of the Street Fighter Monk. Basically. Punchy Kicky Monk. That's going to be it for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. Make sure you check out our sponsors in the link down below. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for our sponsors, Hit Point Press. Check out their big, bad bundles. Unique, cool monsters, history, lore, everything you need to throw these villains into your campaign. And it's a great way to get around your players that like to metagame, or if they do it accidentally, like I tend to do at times. Maybe they think they know what this monster is by the description. They can create some fun opportunities and unique things to throw at your even your most experienced players would not see coming. So check out the link in the description down below.